Hello. So this quick video will show the reporting capabilities from within Irwin. We have a sample model that's already opened up and it has various subject areas and each subject area has my diagrams at the bottom. One of the precursors to have a successful report is one, to ensure that our subject areas are named properly along with having proper diagrams as you can see I have properly named diagrams here and sort them in any order that you want to present them in um, subject areas that are named like this with ER diagram 413 will publish as is and we will see the impact of this later on along with that it is also helpful to have our mud diagrams organized correctly along with having actual metadata that can be useful for extracting this information out into a report format we're going to go ahead and take a report that's already been pre-built for us. Um, you can create a report from scratch, or you can go ahead and open up a pin report and, mod and, and modify that report as needed. In this case, we already have a report created ahead of time, and we can take this report and we can preview this report to make sure that everything looks as expected. Once we're satisfied with the report itself, we're going to go ahead and take this report and extract it to either a CSV format, HTML format, or PDF. Now, CSV is going to be basically an Excel format that looks similar to this. We're going to go ahead and test this and push this out into an HTML format. So I'll go ahead and click on HTML here. I'll have my output selected. I can also set up the report template, the HTML template, on how... Uh, the report will be generated and what colors and fonts will be utilized for that specific report. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and run this report. It will prompt me for which subject areas do I want to run this report against. So if I wanted to only present the product information, I could only I may select only the product information. In this case, we're actually going to select every single option here so we have a full, complete report. Notice again, we have ER diagram and then a number. Again, at this point in time, this does become a little bit confusing because users or the consumers of this report will not know what diagram they're specifically looking at or what information they should expect to find in here. I'm going to go ahead and extract this report and this will generate my HTML for me at this time. Once it's created, it's going to open that HTML output. And as you can see, we have a nice table of contents here. We can modify the colors and the logos if we choose to do so. Here's where the diagram 413, diagram 116 do not provide adequate information to my uh, viewers. So if I were to look at, let's say, the main subject area, conceptual data model, here's the conceptual data model. The diagram that is being displayed here is exactly verbatim to the diagram that is in Irwin. So if the diagram is not sorted correctly or laid out correctly, that will be reflected in your output. Now, in this case, we also have a physical data model and we have our logical or LDM in here. Now, as you go through this, again, we have our product related diagrams here. So if this is only for the product related objects and this is going to be determined based on who your audience is. As you go through this, this gives us a nice image, a nice representation of what the model looks like. However, I want to see additional metadata and I can click on the product table and it will prompt me with additional metadata about that particular table. Now, this information that is being presented here is fully under the control of the report generator. So in this case, you would have to decide what information should be displayed on this screen. And you can control how much and how in-depth you want to go into the screen. Now, at the end of the day, you can actually click on any entity here. And even if I was at the conceptual data model, I can click on, for example, the customer entity, and it will show me the information about that customer. If I wanted to see the data in a raw format, I can also look at my data dictionary. That's just going to give me a really flat structure uh, output file for my metadata. Um, this can be handy, especially if you don't know exactly where you're going on. Going to in the diagram, this gives you an entire list of every object that you've extracted. Again, this information that is being displayed here is fully customizable and up to the discretion of the report generator as to how much information needs to be presented. 
The issue that becomes with HTML is it's great for presentation. It's great for uh, non-technology dependent devices. However, the, mis the issue becomes is the inability to print and the inability to share this. Again, these are HTML files. So if I wanted to, I would need to upload all of my HTML core files to my SharePoint, to my intranet, or whatever website uh, method I want to use. However, um, because it's inability to email, there's an alternative where we can use is a PDF output option. Now the PDF, again, is going to create a sample output, and it's going to ask me what do I want to run it against. I will pick everything here for right now, and this is going to generate my PDF files for me. Now these PDF files are great here. There's my two PDF files that I can email, print, or whatever I would like to do. Now in this case, I will look at the data dictionary with the diagram report first, and that's going to give me an entire output of what the model looks like. Now, alternatively, this is a full HTML file. And if I scroll to the top right here, it's going to give me a diagram. So now my users can see my model. But you have to be mindful, my model here as a sample has about a dozen or so entities. In reality, your model may have 300 entities. So this screen is going to get really microscopic. So this is where it is recommended to use either the HTML if you have a very large model or use subject areas to divide your larger model into smaller subsets. So if, same concept here. If I wanted to know more information about less of the support ticket or the product entity, I can click directly on this and it will take me to the page where product problem is. So here's my product. Here's the metadata for it. And here's the columns that are there. Now, along with this same information, at the end of my entire report, I have my index. So depending on which object I'm looking for and how I would like to get to that information, I can either search it or I can use my index to say, hey, I'm looking for a customer. It appears on page 6, 14, and so forth. I can click on it, and now there's my customer information right there. Again, these are fully customizable. You can go ahead and create custom reports for your metadata free model. Alternatively, you do have the option to create what we call ODBC reports, which allows you to run ODBC queries against the urban model. So in this case, if I run select name, physical name from entity, that will go ahead and give me a report of all of my logical and physical names. I do need to put a trans around this. And now I have a dictionary that I can actually use in ODBC query to create that report. Again, this is not going to give me the diagrams. It will just give me the raw metadata that I can use to publish into an Excel format and then modify that Excel externally. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day.